Uh, well, Africa Hype Market really came about about two months ago, and this was just a discussion in the sitting room. Um, Mahi and I uh, talked about how we wanted to set up a pop-up market that was going to be affordable for small and medium businesses in Nigeria. And we um, really wanted to give people the opportunity to showcase their products in an affordable way. And um, we did our research and we thought, wow, this is a great idea. There are a few pop-up markets around, but we can do something different. We can actually create a pop-up market that even the smaller brands can be able to afford to showcase their products. And this was really something that we were like, passionate about, wanted to do this. And um, that was the beginning of Africa Hype. All, all sorts of um, industries for the business, all sorts of entrepreneurs, um, you know, from jewelry to fashion to anything. If you're talented and if you can be able, um, you know, to pretty much, if you can be able to sell it on social media, you can come there in Africa Hype Market and be able to sell anything to our uh, audiences, to our visitors. And See, the whole point of this pop-up market is to do that, to basically build these small SMEs, you know, to take a uh, consumer market, to uh, introduce their product, to meet people, to network, and then they could even get other opportunities from other big vendors. So getting the word out there, introducing their products, that way, I think it should, you know, somehow, some way they'll, they'll get there, in a way. Basically, our pop-up market is very different than the others because, um, let's say, looking at the name, it's Africa Hype Market, um, we want to go across Africa, and this is the actual dream. And we're starting from Nigeria and starting from Lagos um, to make that dream come true. Um, we are looking at uh, involving both local and expert vendors and visitors, and we want to uh, bring them together so that there is more of a social interaction. And this is not just going to be a pop-up market where, there's, uh, where we sell products. We are just really looking at people networking, networking. like a whole fun fair. We want to make this more of like a festival type feeling. So that's where we have from fashion to food available. We're going to have a picnic type area set up where people can actually sit on the grass and enjoy drinks with their friends. And we have so many food um, and drink brands that people are going to enjoy themselves. We have a kids area and that is going to be a bouncy castle and we're going to have a choo-choo express and uh, we're going to have a face painter. So there's going to be something for everyone. And we really were looking at vendors from different industries to come in and so that everyone can have something to buy or someone to meet there and just Enjoy basically, you know, yeah, yeah, really network. That's why this is really something that we put out there. This is a social event, you know, so there's going to be networking and shopping all together in one. So there's a lot of exciting stuff. We have a lot of big brands and we have a lot of smaller brands. So in terms of, as uh, my partner said, bridging the gap, it's very surprising that for big brands and this pop-up market trend didn't start here. Bigger brands like LV and Co outside this country, they have set up pop-up uh, stores. And so here in Nigeria, what we've seen is that we've seen like big brands like Oriki, we've seen um, Star that's going to Radler showcasing and tasting their beer. Um, we're going to have Nature's Gentle Touch, which is a big hair brand. They're going to have a mobile hair clinic set up on the grounds, on the venue, and um, they're going to do a free consultation for people and also um, giving out vouchers worth 10,000 naira to 50 lucky people. You know, um, so it's great. I think um, Urban Fusion is going to have a food truck. There's like uh, even Tribe, which is a big brand. I love their clothing. So we feel like there are so many household names that you know that signed up. And there are so many startup businesses that I've never heard of. And they reached out and they said, we want to be a part of this. Yeah. And so we are very excited to like be able to do this, you know. And to add to that is that we have a lot of um, expat vendors as well that actually use Ankara and um, leather products to make amazing products. And they're selling out pretty well only on Instagram. So that makes it more exciting, yeah.
Uh, personally, I would advise them to use their own brand, African brands, African prints. We have a lot of a lot of um, inspirational prints. And for me personally, I love Ankara's. We could do so much with it. Instead of sourcing it from elsewhere, we could be able to use our own product and then market it to the world. We have excellent products. So instead of designers, you know, bringing other stuff, I personally, personally, really advise them to use their own products. I would, I would also advise, I think just to add to that, I would advise that, you know, uh, more of the big businesses are now, uh, some of our, you know, um, upper society, I would like them to look into investing in the, the textile industry and really kind of developing that industry to the level where people can actually get the kind of fabrics they are looking for to really finish the product and so that we can get to that international um, stage because what we see, we see a lot of tribal and Ankara prints on the international runways. Other designers using it actually, exactly. instead of our own. And so. then, but we're talking about like finishing and really just having everything put together so that we are on that level and standard where everyone around the world can buy our brands. So I would encourage definitely more investment in the textile industry. Yeah, more trainings, more as you said, the finishing part and you will see all the expat vendors are using Ankara products or our local products. We'll see it all around Africa. We'll, be, we'll hope to be in every city in Africa, uh, either collaborating with uh, existing pop-up markets or having our own and touching every local SME uh, business, um, how do you say it? <laughs> Everywhere across Everywhere, Africa. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, I think, uh, just to add to what you said, um, this is exactly what we see. We have looked at um, the next steps going into Accra and um, Ethiopia, where uh, Mahi is from as well, to, um, and then step by step going across other countries. Um, we are looking at a very affordable way. So now that our stores are just 10,000 Naira, we want to go to other cities and present that opportunity to other small and medium businesses. In affordable ways as well. Yeah, so we are looking into collaborations with other pop-up markets outside, um, especially in the cities that we're not very familiar mm -hmm. with. We're looking at different kinds of um, collaborations uh, we can do in the future. But in the next five years, um, every quarter we're going to be in Lagos. And this is something strategically we decided to do that so that this is going to be more of a, a, a unique experience. We don't want people to feel like we're there all the time. We're going to be here in Lagos now. We want to be in Accra next month. You know what I mean? So this is actually the kind of feel we want to create um, so that anywhere people go, they will know, oh, there is a pop-up market that's an African thing, not just Nigeria.